second episode of this program and just to let you guys know this program is not going to be like this typically but we thought we'd take these first two episodes and lay a foundation for everything that we've been through we're going to be digging into in future episodes marriage and family and business and entrepreneurship and all of these more relevant topics but to set the context for all that we wanted to give you guys a background a foundation for what we're going through so if you miss the first episode go back watch the first episode the super short version is we started dating when she was 14 and I was 16 we dated through high school um, and shortly after Prudence turned 18, we got married. We've been married for 25 years this year. We've been together for almost 30 years. We've got four kids, and we spent a lot of time learning about all sorts of things. Started businesses, um, spent some time working in a children's home, and we're going to pick up roughly 2009-ish mm -hmm. in this first two-episode like foundational journey story. So in 2009, paint paint the picture for us. What was going on? Well, our last um, baby was born in 2009. So number four. So number four. And I was, I think the kids were probably about um, ages nine seven two and then the last newborn, one newborn. yep so we really had kind of like two sets of children yeah we called them we actually called them 1.0 and 2.0 yep so That's yeah how strange we are well i kind of got like stuck in the whole debacle about well should we have more kids should we not have more kids and he let me choose how many we kids planned we them have. all we didn't have any oopses no. we planned them all but we had the two and then when we were actually working at that children's home they discouraged you from having more children so then when we left the children's home and came back to the pacific northwest we said you know what well we didn't i let I let Prudence decide, but she said, you know what, let's have another one. But then once she was pregnant, she said, oh man, this poor kid's going to be all alone <laughs> because yeah. the other two were like four years yeah. older. Yep. And so then we, we had two, two more. So that's how we got family 1.0 and family 2.0. It's yep. all the same family, Yeah. but they're like two different age groups. Yep. But it's worked out pretty well, you know. Um... It's been awesome. Yeah. It's been awesome. When we want to feel like younger parents, we hang out with the littler kids. <laughs> when we want to feel like more mature parents, then we hang out with the older kids. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, anyway, that was us in 2009. You were working at... Comscore. So when did I leave that company? In 2012. Yeah, 2012. he started making a lot of rumblings about wanting to do his own thing entrepreneurially yeah. again. And of course we've already had stabbed in and had some taste of that previously. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't like super <clears throat> excited about it because I like the stable. Yeah. You like the stability. Stability. Yeah. Which is very everything. reasonable. Very but, reasonable. But he was increasingly becoming more and more unhappy with what he was doing. And, um, we didn't have a lot of friends um, during this time of our life. Right. Um, we we just didn't, and it wasn't for the lack of trying. It was just we just couldn't land on people that yeah were like in the same spot yeah. as we were really. Yeah, we were very serious about our faith. We were very serious about everything we were doing. Not that we didn't want to have fun cuz I think we we're fun too, but mm -hmm. we really were we we're really serious. And it was actually super hard to find people that were 
as serious about well we stuff homeschooled and he was in, uh you know a pretty rigorous type job and um we'd had a lot of life experience that maybe other people mm -hmm. couldn't relate to yeah and um we lived in a section of town too where there we didn't know a lot of people and i'm not like super huge go-getter of Yes. relationships <laughs> not a big big influencer <laughs> so uh anyway so it was it was kind of a lonely a lonely time it was a lonely time and i was i was traveling a lot i was working for this company called comscore i was traveling a lot and i was you know 60 70 hour work weeks i was working a lot and um and i began to feel a real significant spirit of hypocrisy on me because my job was to meet with the heads of television studios and then they would they would help me understand what it was they were trying to accomplish and then I would come back um, to our offices and then I would help design and lead and manage the software development of these measurement tools for the television industry so we're a very conservative family. We didn't even have like cable TV in our house, but I was pouring my life into making companies like Playboy Entertainment more successful. Like I was literally working long hours to create reports that would help them understand the perfect window to give a free trial to get the most subscriptions. So I, I really started to develop a feeling of hypocrisy where I believe this was damaging to families. I believe this was damaging to the kingdom, but I was just pouring my life into it. Um, and I have this entrepreneurial energy. Even while we were there, we started, you know, had started some companies and had done some things on the side, like we had free time. I don't know what we were thinking, but we were just always doing things. Um, but, but Prudence absolutely loves the stability, which is totally reasonable. So it was kind of hard. Like I, I was feeling this anxiety, like I needed to leave. And she was feeling the safety of having a paycheck. I was very successful financially in that company. And, and so it was, a, it was a weird time. I feel like it was odd. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't want to go work for someone. You wanted to be in charge of whatever it was that we were doing. So uh, Yes, I wanted to be in charge. It's a lot of instability. Yeah. And, but I just, I finally came to a place where I realized that um, he needed to be happy in what he was doing. Because, frankly, his unhappiness was really miserable for me yeah actually so I eventually was like you know what <laughs> I don't care what we do just do something that makes you happy <laughs> um, maybe we'll be living in a cardboard box I don't know yeah but certainly it will be better than your um, unhappiness with yeah. what you're doing. So, and it wasn't that I disagreed with him and his um, uh, mental state about feeling like he was wasn't supposed to be furthering yeah. this agenda. No, you were super supportive. Super it. supportive. It was just a matter of, well, what are we supposed to do to pay the bills? So before I actually left that company, we started a fitness company. It was an online fitness studio. And that company actually still is running today. There are people all over the world that work out in their comfort of their own home on their cell phones or laptops or smart TVs. Um, we also started a supplement company. And I think it's super important to talk about this one. We started a supplement company. Well, actually, we didn't start it. We... Um, I was doing mentoring a coaching business consulting um, for a doctor who had developed a supplement that he used in practice to help his patients taper off and come off of SSRIs, which are antidepressant medication. Um, and um, you, Prudence, had been on antidepressant medication for, gosh, at this point, four or five yeah or five I think years. that that journey started for me in uh, probably 2000 in Oklahoma four. started in Oklahoma yeah. right yeah 2004 2005 and um, 
I didn't know much about uh, antidepressants as a whole. I knew one of my family members uh, um, was using them, and they seemed to help her. Right. Um, during my earlier years, I um, I knew I probably had some emotional problems, but I never knew what it was like to feel different away from that. And so, um, you mean you didn't, you didn't know any different? I didn't know any different. Sure. I didn't know any different. And so, um, there wasn't people around me that said, Hey, it sounds like you're having problems. (laughs) Can we help you? Right. Um, it was just, uh, you know, you just keep trucking, you just keep doing what you're doing. And, um, I didn't understand that, um, I could be different, um, or that I, maybe I had a problem. So, um, going into the doctor, um, there in Oklahoma for something totally unrelated and they took my blood pressure and it was sky high because coming into the doctor made me nervous. So they came back and they re the check and stuff and then the doctor there was I I think he noticed that I must have had some psychological problems coming into the doctor so you mean you were was, nervous about even going in there yeah, or something like that yeah yeah and um he told me that he said you know do you have problems with anxiety or depression at all and I'm like well I don't consider myself someone that has problems with that right and so he's like well I have a pill that you can take just once a day and it'll really help you out if you're interested in it at all and I said okay well I'd have to talk to my husband about that because I don't I don't know if that's something that I need and so I went home and I told him, I said, yeah, funny thing, the doctor offered me a small pill to take once a day to help me out emotionally. And he you looked kinda, at me you in all around. seriousness. Well, I was telling you actually what had happened that day because I found it interesting. Yeah. And he looks at me, he's like, and you didn't take it? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I'm like, you think I need something? And I think that he wasn't 100% sure if I did or not, but maybe if it helped out his spouse into a better mental state. No, you needed something. So two weeks later, I went back and I told him I would take the pills. And so I did. I started taking these pills and um, they um, basically kind of flatlined my emotions. It made me kind of drowsy and... Um, it did change the way that I was emotionally. It, it didn't make me super happy and it, I wasn't really unpleasant. Um, but I did feel drugged to some extent on them. And so I found out what my other family member was on and was working for them and changed medication. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot, lot better. Like I didn't feel. You're saying the one that your family member was on worked better for you. Yeah. Yes. And so, um, I stayed on that for several years and then decided. Started in Oklahoma. You were still on it when we came back to the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, actually probably just a couple of years. And I came back and I, um, I came, I think we had Kaiser or something at the time where you just get a doctor, any doctor that's available. Mm -hmm. And, um, I decided that I wanted to find out how I could just get off of these drugs because I didn't really want to be on them. You know, I've kind of was starting to hear about how they could cause a lot of problems eventually if you stayed on them too long. Mm -hmm. And so I went into the doctor that I didn't know and I told him, Hey, I would like to try to get off. He gives me all the statistics about, Oh, well, you know, 50% of people that are on antidepressants, they, uh, don't come off of them. And then there's like a whole nother statistic after that. And he basically was discouraging. Um, but he says, but if you want to give it a try, let's do if it. You're dumb enough to try getting off this meds. Yeah. So I kid you not, he literally <clears throat> gave me a little business card thing with a number on it 
and he said, just cut down the pill every couple of days and call this number if you feel like killing yourself or anyone else and sent me out the door. Oh my goodness. And so, so you felt real I supported. Like, well, but yes, but I didn't know what I was going to go through or expect at this point. Yeah. I had, I didn't have any information. Right. This was literally, I, I you know, you're supposed to trust your doctors to help you with these things. <laughs> they are the experts. I thought he was kind of kidding a little bit as he handed me the card. But Except then, for he wasn't. That's the thing. No, but then as the weeks, I got into it, three weeks into it, and I started really transforming into something really ugly, like really ugly. And I watched it happen so fast. The transition happened really fast, so I was literally able to watch myself emotionally deteriorate into something that I wouldn't like okay here's the reason he gave me the number mm. that you mean the position. doctor the, yeah. this is now i understand why he gave me the number to call right so it was it was serious yes Very serious. it was and so i i eventually um in this process um i asked him i'm like is this kind of who I was before these drugs and he's like well yes in a lot of ways yes and I'm like <laughs> okay well you're not living with this person this is really unfair and I don't care if I'm on drugs for the rest of my life you're not going to live with this person so I went back to the doctor and got put back th on them promptly <laughs> and figured that I was just going to be on them for the rest of my life yeah because uh, apparently my body was deficient in producing what I needed yeah. to, to be healthy emotionally. Yeah, it's tough. Um, so then a couple of years later, he meets a... Um, um, yeah, so so then fast forward to um, I'm doing business consulting for this doctor. I'm helping him um, develop a financial model for his practice and things like this. And, and he tells me, hey... Um, I've got this supplement that I've developed to help my patients that are on anti-depression or anti-anxiety medication come off that medication. And um, I'm like, cool, that's great. So I'm helping him for a while. And then um, basically he invites me to become part of the company and help build it with him. And I say, I just not interested in that you know I didn't have a big belief in supplements at that time because um, you know you see these giant supplement stores and they're just floor to ceiling with all of these pills and it just seems like everybody that goes in there has the same problems when they come out and they just come out with less money in their wallet and it just felt like a scam but he was like no no no, this is amazing this product has helped so many people it's absolutely incredible um, and I was like okay that's cool um, but he was really, really persistent. So eventually I said, look, my wife has tried to come off her depression medication and she wasn't able to, and she'd rather not be on this medication for the rest of her life. So, uh, why don't you take her on as a patient? I'll keep working with you. If it helps her, then we'll talk. And, um, so he did. So he took her on as a patient and it was a couple, what, 60 days, 30 days. I don't know. How long was the before you were totally off your um, SSRIs? It was about two months. About two months. Two months. Um, went through this process with her, got her on the supplement, and after two months or so, then she was just completely off the SSRIs. And it was like she was a different person. It was like, um, no, it wasn't like she was, she was a different person. She um, was kind of like... Uh, all of the edges sanded off when she was on the SSRIs. And then after that, on the supplement, um, she would have good days and bad days, but she had so much more vibrancy and creativity. Um, and since then, um, she's released music albums and written books and, and just has radically unlocked her. Why don't you speak to that a little bit? Because it's been a bit of a journey. And now you've been on this supplement now for 10 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Um, and some people go on the supplement for, um, you know, six months to 18 months, and some people are on it long term. 
Uh, yeah. So it just, um, I just, I feel like there's, um, some of us just aren't producing the, the stuff that we need in our brains to really function optimally, which is why so many of us take vitamins and mm -hmm. things is to help put those things back into our system. So it's really what it is, is just putting what my body is not seemingly capable of producing on yeah. its own. What's different about and, this supplement is it is like the SSRIs will do a synthetic replacement for your serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, those types of of hormones. And what this does is it basically provides amino acid based vitamins, if you will, well, to support for your, your brain. To, so to it do makes its, its own. Yeah. So, so I'm, call it I'm brain able food. to do my my brain is able to do its its optimal function with the support yeah. of this product rather than the um the synthetic medication that where your my brain is literally like okay it's doing it for me i'm just gonna take a break and never work again yeah <laughs> Yeah. So it's more like a brain food. Yeah. We've got one psychiatrist that prescribes it to a lot of people and he calls it brain food. Yeah, because it really is his brain fertilizer. So it's Well, he just doesn't really call it brain fertilizer. Well, I do, I do. Because that's kind of I weird do. and gross. Brain food. Food sounds better than fertilizer. Yeah, well. You know what people think of when they think of fertilizer? Well, it could be different things. The best thing they could think of is like fish guts and stuff. Well, anyway. So anyways. So it's literally uh, like I feel like there's three like I've I've um, I've lived like three different emotional states in my life. Three versions is, of prudence, huh? There, there is. There's like three different versions. The one with no help at all. Mm -hmm. The one on synthetic medication, which was better yeah. than no help at all. <laughs> even with its side effects. And then there was this, um, this supplement, which just helps, um, me have a normal, regular emotional state where I can have, um, bad times or, or like I can experience feelings, yeah. natural of, ups and downs, ups and downs and just how it's supposed to be. And rather than down here at the bottom or flatlined where there's no emotions whatsoever. So it's been a pretty big miracle worker for me. Anyway, so after he saw that, then he decided to... Yeah, so so it really, it really did... I was a completely different person. She was a completely different person. So um, we've been um, working together managing that company for over 10 years now so we, we started that company well we didn't really start it we became part of it and um and then uh, we started this fitness company we co-founded this fitness company and that's still going today and both of those are really powerful and cool stories because they've just helped so many people um from all over and you know, there there began to be this theme that the Lord started to do with the businesses that we were involved in. Everything that we seemed to be called to and that God would bring our way had to do with human flourishing. They weren't all the same vertical. They weren't all the same industry. But they all had to do about hu creating better environments for people so that people could flourish in the life that God created for them. So we really felt like this kingdom theme in our businesses. And um, so we decided to leave Comscore and that was a big scary thing. These other things, the fitness company, the supplements and stuff, that really wasn't providing even remotely enough revenue to replace the full-time salary, the executive full-time salary that we had from Comscore. It was really so a scary. Of stepping out. It was very on scary. Faith that the Lord was going to provide. So we took he, all of our savings, even, retirement, everything, and just um, stepped out. Yeah, and um, it was. I mean, looking back, it's like we still didn't have people surrounding us telling us that 
It was a lonely time too. That, that actually. was that things were going to work out. Yeah, it was literally us kind of just pioneering in that, believing that uh, God had taken care of us before that point. So He probably will this time, especially if we were hanging our hats on making a lot of money, hmm. um, and sacrificing that part of it. Yeah, because we believed that. Um, the the way that we were getting that money was not um, was hypocritical was hypocritical yeah to, for sure yeah so we felt like we felt really strongly that the Lord would bless that situation for us because we felt like we were trying to honor what He wanted so we did we quit we quit that thing um, we took all of our savings retirement everything and we just stepped out in faith. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which you loved? Nope. <laughs> no, Prudence I don't. Prudence is not a risk taker. Not a she, risk taker. She um, is very supportive of the risks that um, I feel like we should take, and we we do it together. But we're definitely two sides of a coin. Mm -hmm. So we stepped out and we started um, another company. We co-founded another company with some friends of ours. Um, this was a human capital um, company where there was a um, uh, personality assessment. We partnered with the founder creator of that assessment and we started to create an organization that started off in business and it went out and helped um, companies train their managers and executives to how to communicate better, how to do conflict resolution and how to hire and then trained employees how to communicate with each other better, how to do conflict resolution, how to do their jobs better, how to become the best version of themselves and um, that was really exciting and and actually what we found right away is that it was a radical it was a radically affected our own communication patterns and our ability to understand each other better so it really it, just knowing that language and pouring into that it improved our marriage um, improved our communication I feel like it improved our parenting um, and it was exciting but um, we realized that the way we had set up the company lent itself to it eventually collapsing because the person that we partnered with that created that personality assessment um, had some issues with, I mean, just to be blunt, with greed and pride and, and some things that kind of got in the way from it being real successful. And then because of our own ignorance, the way we had set up the company kind of prevented us from really fixing that. So we didn't really give up on it initially. In fact, once we realized we weren't going to be able to use that assessment, we saw such incredible benefit. We spent um, about a thousand hours to develop a our own assessment. So we just poured in. Took, studied every major personality assessment out there, DISC, Strengths, Finder, Myers, you know, Enneagram, everything. Studied all those, the origin of them, reading Carl Jung books, just really poured in to develop our own assessment. But at the end of the day, because of the way all that was set up, we actually ended up shutting that company down and closing it. And it was pretty hard on me because I felt like we were finally doing something that the Lord wanted us to do. And I didn't understand, like, if we're doing something that God wanted us to do, then why isn't it working out? And why are things going really well and being super easy? And anyway, <laughs> so why are you uh, laughing? Why are you laughing why about aren't that? aren't they super easy? Isn't that right? If, 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 aren't, isn't it supposed to be when you're doing something that God wants you to do, everything's super easy? I thought uh, that's what it was. No. That's not what it is? Afraid not. So we... Ended up closing that company down, and it was um, super hard for me in a way. And um, I don't know; it didn't seem like it affected you as much as it affected me. Well, I felt like you it just was, morphed I felt into like... a whole different company uh, with the same friends. Yeah, so we kind of moved our efforts. So we, we basically closed that down, but then we kind of moved our efforts into a new organization that was kind of a had a kind of a sister feel to it that was um, an education, a digital education company. So essentially we started a new company 
I mean, it, it was a totally new company. That was a digital education company. And then this one, we were like, okay, now we're doing it God's way. We're doing it God's way. And because we're doing it God's way, he's going to make this thing successful. Right? Is that what we said? <laughs> <laughs> that is what we said. That is what we said. That is what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we poured everything we had into that. Um, anything that we had saved. Uh, any... And we were working with a set of friends that were friends before we came That's into right. business with each other. That's right. Uh, not for a long amount of time, a couple of years probably. Um, but we, we felt like we had finally found some people that we could relate to. Absolutely. And and um, it was hard. We on wanted the same people that life were serious. Trail, around our same ages, and um, it was it was like after years of loneliness. Yeah, we, it was amazing, <laughs> actually, in a lot of ways. You're really looking we were over lonely. a lot of faults in people because it, I mean, you're just so thrilled to have relationship with someone. So we so that so we jumped fully in. I mean, we were fully in the other thing too, but this was like, okay, this is it. This is the thing that we've been called to our whole life and poured everything in. Um, and that was a digital education company. Basically, we worked with thought leaders. We would help. They, they would pay us a fee. We would take the fee and then we would take their genius, if you will, and extract it and make a digital learning product out of it. And then we helped sell that. We co-marketed it with them. And that's how the company made its revenue. And it's began to grow really fast. Um, I think it was a couple of years we were growing it in Portland. We had an office in the Pearl District and it was growing really fast. The company was doubling its revenue every year um, or more every six, eight months and doubling its size. And um, both us and this other group of friends that we uh, founded the company with we really were very conservative when we really wanted to kind of get out of that area so we decided we we're going to move the company to another smaller town uh, still in the Pacific Northwest but we we're going to move the company so we moved and uh, and for a while we actually had two offices um, and things were just growing and growing and growing and growing and somewhere uh, real soon after we moved um, the the couple came to us and just decided they had decided that we were not good friend material that we were kind of toxic people and were really creating a situation by even being their friends of putting them in a position where they were not above reproach because they were associated with us and these were our closest friends so this was a massive and and business and partners, business partners. Yeah. So this was a massive blow to us. Well, that yeah, um, I immediately recognized you know what was happening. I felt like you know the devil really wanted to put a kibosh on this business. That he didn't want it to be successful, yeah. and he was. Messing, I think that's true. By the way, he was messing with us to really try to um, implode it. And um, he immediately wanted to quit immediately. And, that day, that same and day. I um, said, no, I don't think that we should be just quitting. Let's ride this out and see where it goes. And um, we're, we'll see if we can work these things out. Um, um, there, was, there was a lot of... Um, non-communication between us and it, it felt it, well so it was, we kept going we, we, kept, we going kept going in the business and um the break in the relationship was like that of i mean if i was to describe it it's like being married to someone and then they just stop talking to you but you're and, still married but you're still married you still live in the same you can't house. get a divorce you can't move away from the situation you're living in the same bedroom the same house yeah. everything but you literally cannot separate and that is how it felt yeah it's definitely um, definitely bizarre it was very 
bizarre, very frustrating, very difficult because um, you can't make people do things. And we actually wanted professional reconciliation help. <sighs> and that was, went, um, it didn't happen because the other party wasn't interested in that. And so we literally rode through the next couple of years. Nobody could tell us what to think, how to, like how to help us, how to help us cope, what to do, what to say. Should we go? Should we stay? Yeah. <laughs> there was no Yeah, that was another a, super us. alone time too actually because we we really tried to get wise counsel. We did. And we actually got professional counseling for ourselves to try to figure out how we were supposed to navigate this and what we were supposed to think because yeah. we're like we're all Christians here. This isn't yeah. how we're supposed to act towards each other. Yeah, we should be able um, to reconcile this. We should, like, what a fantastic story this would be for others if we could come through this and and come above this. And it just, it didn't happen. No, it didn't. So we kept moving down that path with the business. And then in 2016... Um, well, in 2015, um, a series of things started to happen where the operational costs were outrunning the revenues coming in. And really what was happening is we were actually growing too fast, which looking back at a Excel spreadsheet, it's super obvious what was happening. But in the moment, it felt like everything was going great because we were actually growing. We were actually growing too fast, actually. And so what was happening is the clients that were coming on, the cost to onboard them and create products for them just was exceeding the revenue of the other clients that we already had. So in hindsight, looking back, really probably all we would have needed to do was slow down our growth. But in the moment, it seems like growth is good. So that was kind of another kind of ignorant yeah, but thing. there was a lot of complicated things that we're not going to actually share here um, that's happened within that business. Um, yeah, for sure. That we'll just leave alone. Yeah, there was a lot of, there was a lot. <laughs> we're just going to leave that alone. There's a lot of factors alone. at play, yes. if you will. Um, um, but basically so. what happened was, is um, within about 10 months, uh, we went from uh, cash flow positive, no debt, to um, uh, a, about two hundred thousand dollars of IRS debt and about a hundred and twenty or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars of other debt, just fast. I mean, when you have almost sixty employees, um, like things go like the debt happened fast, and because of the way we had. I mean, we really made more mistakes here um, because of the way we had set up the business and because we had a minor uh, ownership position, we didn't have a lot of control over what was happening. And so this just happened really fast, snowballed. And basically in 2016, the IRS showed up and with their little badges like the movies and, and said, hey, you guys, need, you need to shut this company down right now. And um, so we tried to pivot and laid off half the staff, tried to change our business model to be super efficient. And some of those things, you know, almost had a chance to work as well. But in the end, um, after a couple of months, we had to shut that company down. And for me, that was definitely the biggest failure. The, the darkest part of my life was shutting that down. I mean, it, it was literally... This isn't good at all, but it literally was my identity. And it was just completely collapsed in on itself. In a really short amount of time, went from just doing amazing to less than 12 months to just completely shutting that down and, and failing it. Yeah, yeah. It Along was, with it was, our closest friend's yeah, so, relationship collapsing. Yeah, so as we're like, had been trying to make sense out of the last what two years mm -hmm. with that whole relationship right and it not adding up to what it should have added up to right um we were saddled with an enormous amount of debt and it seemed really unfair because the irs isn't fair no at all 
Not and they at saddled all. us with the same amount of debt as the other couple. And so even though we had a minor voting power, a more mighty minor voting power. Yeah, I mean basically no control. We had no control and we still had to to deal with the same amount of debt as this other couple. We have no idea how it happened with the other couple and how anything worked because once those doors shut I it was a rarity that we ever saw them. Ever. Yeah, so, so we we don't know. That's that's all. Yeah, so basically what happened is in 2016 <laughs> um we had to shut that company down. We actually um had to go through our uh, personal bankruptcy even though before this we had no personal debt. Actually, we had to go through bankruptcy to break off the loans that were in place for the company. And there's a whole 10 episodes worth of story just around that by itself. And then um, that doesn't do anything for the IRS, though. Bankruptcy does nothing for the IRS. So then it took us another four years. It wasn't until 2020 that we actually fin finalized our negotiation with the IRS and got on a payment plan to pay them off. So... Those four years of every couple of yeah. weeks being reminded that we had and failed and that, it was that, horrible. Um, that business was shutting down like the week of or right after or something. He tells me, you know, it's going to be at least three years probably before we're done with this. And I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> How could it be three years? Yeah, I think I said two years. Um, anyway, it ended up being four. It ended up being four. Four, four years. Yeah. And... During that time, um, the Lord provided. He provided all through it, thin, lean times financially. Um, and we had a lot of time for processing yeah. um, what we just went through. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy because. You know, we had been, when I was working at Comscore, we were very successful financially, had a lot of, um, you know, status in a, in a sense, you know, like a, a really good job in a, in a kind of a cool industry, very successful financially. And then we kind of found ourselves in this situation, at least for me, in 2016, 2017, where all of a sudden we have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt. We had to go through bankruptcy. That didn't even remove the debt because it was with the IRS. The IRS is, is nearly impossible to work with. Like they fax. That, yeah. that tells you all you need to know is that you communicate with fax. So like I'm literally faxing them hundreds of pages of documents and they're faxing me back hundreds of pages of documents. And you can't call them on the phone typically and they don't call you. It's just, it's absolutely crazy to work with them. It's super difficult. And I was having a meeting with somebody and, you know, there was just kind of, they were asking me questions about the situation. They said, you know, it's amazing how well you're handling this because people commit suicide over things like this. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's true. It was, it was crazy. Like the Lord provided the stability and the strength to go through it. I look back now and it was, it was brutal. It was the most difficult time of my life, but honestly, I never felt alone from the Lord. I felt very lonely in the world. People didn't understand. We had ver virtually no friends that had any kind of experience going through something like this. Mm -hmm. So we had nobody to turn to, but the Lord was there for us throughout the entire thing in a way that is almost difficult to communicate how much he took care of us. Um, it was long and, um, tumultuous for us and we had a lot of time to process like you mentioned yeah a lot of free time we we weren't allowed to make a certain amount of money for like over a certain amount of money for like four years yeah so, so <laughs> as entrepreneurs you just like yeah, literally you're in a holding pattern in the sky yeah. going around in a circle and they send, you, they send you these letters like hey if you don't pay this then we're coming after you. Like they don't say you're going to go to jail, but they come, they write in these letters, like these really nasty threatening letters, like we're going to come after you. And you're going to go to jail. So you call them on the phone and you say, Hey, um, I need to make a payment on this. They're like, no, you can't make a payment. What do you mean? This letter says, if I don't make a payment immediately, 
then like really bad things are going to happen. I say, no, you can't make a payment actually because we're not done processing X, Y, and Z. Now, remember, this is this this is like years into the deal. And you say, so you're telling me don't make a payment. This letter's telling me to make a payment. So what do I do about that? The, and they literally would say on the phone, I'm not sure. And then you'd say, okay, well, can I speak to your boss? You're like, I don't have a boss. We're a team of 18 people that handle this particular case, and everybody, all of my colleagues, were all the same level. There's no boss. There's nobody you can talk to. So I, then you're having this conversation literally like, so you're saying, if I don't pay, then bad stuff's going to happen. And you're saying, if I do pay, bad stuff's going to happen. So what should I do? And they literally would be like, I don't know. I'm not sure. So it was just very bizarre time yeah. in a lot of ways. Very bizarre. I think we could do a whole episode on the IRS and our experience Let's do with it. Them. We're going to do a whole episode on the IRS. That's coming soon. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> so, um, so I want to get in the last 10 minutes of this uh, episode as we kind of wrap up this foundation part. And I want to get to the redemption side. So one of the things that you mentioned, Prudence, was during this time we had a lot of time to process and think. And at that time, the Lord took us on a journey away from, I would say, kind of a religious mindset that we've had our whole life into a new church and kind of a whole new understanding. And we really did an absolute crazy deep dive into um, this whole new understanding of the Holy Spirit and hearing from God and listening to him on purpose. And you kind of don't have a choice when you're in this kind of a situation because there's not a lot of people that we could relate to. And we either would just, we, we kind of had two choices, turn our back on God and say, screw you. We tried to follow you and nothing worked. Or say, well, God, I'm not 100% sure why none of this worked out, but I trust you. And, um, and so that's kind of where we found ourselves. So we went on this journey. That journey took us to um, this uh, church community called Eagle Mountain. And um, we've been here for about four years. Four years, a little over four years. And really flipped our whole world upside down. And um, so we kind of were like, never want to think about these companies again, never want to think about this learning company, never want to think about human capital, never want to think about any of this stuff again. But the Lord, really about two years into it, so 2018 or so, came to us and said, hey, I want to redeem some of this stuff. And I was like, not interested. And it started off with the um, what is now the core identity rating assessment. He came and said, hey, I really want you to dust off that assessment, um, get it going again, start doing the trainings that you guys had developed for relationships, for marriage, and for business and leadership. And we just weren't interested. I mean, I don't know what you thought. I was not interested. Well, you had to drive it. So, so uh, I, I was not interested. At this point, I'm like... Whatever. You're like, whatever. So um, so I'm like, I, Lord, I don't want to do that. That represents a massive failure in my life, and I don't want to do that. And he said, no, no, I want you to do it. And it wouldn't go away. So we finally did. We finally got that back out, um, finished the assessment, put it into the website, started doing trainings, and we've literally been helping. We've been doing them remotely, too, and locally. We've literally helped uh, businesses and marriages and relationships from all over the world from that in just the last couple of years. It's been an amazing testament to his redemption of what I deemed as a total and complete failure that I never wanted to think about again. And then mm -hmm. that became even more true um, with this other company. So this other company, like I mentioned before, that was the that failure of this learning company, this digital learning company, was the absolute biggest horrible thing in my life like the darkest for sure time of my entire life so I didn't want to not only did I not want to talk about it I didn't want to even ever think about it again or the people involved with it or the business model or anything else and in 2018 the Lord clearly asked us to go partner with Eagle Mountain and do something with all that intellectual property and all of the stuff that we had developed and I was like God I don't I don't want to do that. Is there someone else I can talk to up there? You know, maybe Jesus. He's a little nicer. I just didn't want to do that at all. Um, 
But eventually, you know, the Lord just keeps asking. So out of obedience, we went and we met with um, the senior leaders, the founders of Eagle Mountain, um, Bobby and Becky Hobby, and we kind of told them what we felt the Lord was asking. And the business model, I, I put a little proposal together. Here's the business model. Here's what we do. Here's what we feel like the Lord is calling us to do. And they, you know, had this look on their face like, this is hilarious. Like, you're talking to us about some of the stuff that's actually in our business plan. Like we haven't done these things yet, but you're talking to us about stuff that we've been planning to do for 20 years. And I said, okay. And then I'm still feeling to myself, like, I still don't want to do it though. That's neat and everything, but I still would rather not do it. But the Lord was persistent. And so out of obedience, we just kept stepping forward and, um, and actually, um, have partnered with Eagle Mountain. So what that meant was, we were going to just give all of the intellectual property, everything that we had developed, everything that we had learned, we're just going to give that to Eagle Mountain. And then we would step in and manage that ministry um, that was owned by Eagle Mountain. And we did that. And that launched the ministry, Kingdom Learning. And in 2020, um, we kind of soft launched it and then we kind of officially launched it last year in 2021. And just in la the last year, we've had uh, over 160,000 people watch, um, the content that we've created through that ministry or attend one of the events or, you know, do one of the e-courses or watch one of the pieces of content that that ministry has produced. So it's still very young. It's still growing and, you know, kind of a awkward you know, teenager, if you will, but the redemption that the Lord is doing with this thing that I, I don't, I don't know what you thought, but I was 100% convinced that absolutely this thing was done. And I never wanted to think about it again. God's like, well, no, actually, I, if you allow me, I'm going to take that and I'm going to redeem it into something incredible and I'm going to use it in a kingdom way that you could never have possibly imagined and I'm going to do something amazing with it and I'm going to impact people. Um, what what were you thinking during that? Did you never want to talk about it again? Well, as, as bad soon as, as me? you started saying, oh, the Lord's telling me to build a school of some sort. I'm like this. <laughs> na, 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 <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> You're only saying that because most of my ideas don't seem to work out. <laughs> well, that isn't always true. Um, but I also know better than to try to battle with the Lord on stuff. Because sometimes I attempt it, but it doesn't yeah. always work out very well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, here we are. So I guess, uh, you know, as we wrap this up in the next, you know, minute or two, um, you know, I guess as you think back to these two first episodes, it's, it's not the normal format we're going to have, but we really wanted you to hear our heart and our story. We feel like in some ways we've lived like two or three lifetimes. We've just gone through so much and we've just barely scratched the surface on everything. There's about 10 other businesses that we've had some kind of, you know, founding or started. And there's, there's just so many other things, but what we want to do with these two episodes is we really want you to see that no matter what you're going through, um, if you allow the Lord to use that failure or whatever happens, he will redeem it. So, you know, it's a little cliche, but you talk about Thomas Edison found, he didn't fail 10,000 times. You know, this, the old story that it, it took 10,000 different tries to figure out how to make the light bulb, which I think is probably close to true. He didn't fail. He just found 9,999 ways to not make a light bulb. But if he would have stopped, then that's the failure. So the real lesson here is that even when the things collapse in on themselves, collapse in on themselves, if you allow the Lord to redeem it, he'll redeem it. He will. There's no such thing as a failure unless you give up. Yep. So we haven't given up yet. So we, that makes us not failures then, right? So we haven't given up yet. 
Yeah, so I just I just feel like, you know, as we're launching this new TV series or TV program, we just want to come to you and be an encouragement no matter what has gone through, no matter what terrible things you've gone through or are going through right now. They might be um, similar to our story. They might be way worse than our story. I, I guarantee you, you can't find an example inside Scripture where God didn't take somebody and their mistakes and redeem them for his assignment, for his will, for his purpose. But the person has to do that in partnership. Like they absolutely have to be partnering with the Lord. He doesn't like force us. Like he, he doesn't need us, but he sets himself up in a way where he needs us to partner with him. Um, and he does that on purpose because he wants a relationship with us. Prudence, any other thoughts? It's not easy. It's not easy. Usually it's not easy. Yes. Another thing I think that we've come to realize is that the things that are really easy usually aren't that important. And the things that are hard, the things that are important are usually hard. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's about being brave enough to do the hard things. Because if it's something incredible and it's what God wants, it's not going to be easy. I think he does that on purpose because he doesn't, like if it's super easy and we can do it on our own, then we're not going to give him the glory like Gideon's army. Like he's got to create a situation where we know it's him that did it. And he doesn't do that because he's greedy for the attention. He does it because we um, need to partner with him in that. So. As we launch this TV program, uh, we want it to be super encouraging to you. We're going to dig into all kinds of topics. We're going to touch back on some of these stories that we've learned so much for, but we're excited about it. We hope that you will um, like it as well. Um, definitely check out the next episodes that are coming up. They're going to be amazing. I'm going to pray for you guys, and then we'll be done with these first two episodes. All right, Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for the um, opportunity we have um, to reach um, these people uh, across this platform that you've redeemed. This platform that we're coming across right now is a redemption of our failure of businesses that completely collapsed. And now we're broadcasting on this TV network and it's a redemption of what you did. It's incredible what you did, Lord. What what I wanted to never think about again, you are redeeming into something amazing. And we'll see what you do with it, but it is just exciting to be part of something like that. So right now, anybody that's listening to this that's feeling discouraged, they feel like they're, they've are let the ball drop, they failed, they have they haven't been able to do what they were called to do, or they just made too many mistakes that God can't use them, those are lies. I immediately um, command those lies to be banished. Um, if you're making agreement with those lies, um, repent for that. And I just ask that you would just come into their life, Father, and that you would just completely surround them with peace so that they would realize um, what you're trying to do with them is going to be incredible. But they're going to take... Um, uh, and need to have persistence. So, Father, we just ask for persistence and courage and fearlessness and faith as they step out into whatever it is you've called them to. Thank you again, Lord, for the opportunity we've got to um, talk to people about these amazing things that you've started to do in our life and work through them. And we just want to be a blessing to those that are hearing this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.